morning, friends, and welcome to another edition of Unlock Brand with Bradford. This is a, a special edition we do every Thursday, 11 o'clock, and uh, bring in a special guest and and pick up our industry topic, on, especially on licensing, how the licensing is working uh, globally, India, especially in these times, and what is happening and how the changes are happening. So I have a very special guest today, uh, Vivek Malhotra, who's a co-founder of a company called Red Bull. And now Red Bull is an e-com uh, platform at this stage. The uh, company has about 20 different licenses. Uh, they majority in, in the t-shirts and a lot of other active merchandise. So welcome, Vivek. Uh, welcome Hi. to Bradford's uh, Unlock uh, edition. And we start with a question and say, I mean, you yourself is very young. And when I before I think I was opening up uh, this session and I asked you then when you started a company, you said yeah. 2011. Yeah. You know, I don't know what age you were there. And then you looked like <laughs> a 12-year-old at that time. <laughs> Uh, starting an enterprise, you know, so give your journey, you know, because, you know, it's very important for me to really see where, how, I mean, we'll talk about licensing, we'll talk about what is happening in the business, how licensing sure. is shaped, sure. but this, let's start with your journey, how this idea really came to you and how you sure. started this uh, a company. Yeah, so I'm actually in my early 30s, uh, you can guess my age, but uh, so yeah, like I said, we started this company back in October 2011, so it really feels like a long time back. And uh, the website actually went live in March 2012. So in between that uh, October 2011 and March 2012 period, we were actually just putting up pictures on Facebook. Back then we had Blackberry Messenger, if I remember correctly. So we were just circulating images of the, web, uh, of the designs we were working on, on Messenger amongst our friends and just taking orders via messages. And then the website went live early in 2012. So basically, uh, Red Wolf was founded by three of us, the three partners. Uh, all three of us are engineers and surprisingly, a lot of uh, players in the online t-shirt space are engineers. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But uh, yeah, so all three of us are engineers and we met during our uh, engineering college time. And uh, what we saw was, <clears throat> sorry, there was a huge lack of uh, graphic t-shirt companies in India at that point of time. And we really wanted to fill that gap because even me personally, I used to get all my shirts from something like a Nike or Adidas at that point of time, or I used to wait for one of my friends to be coming back from the US and tell him, hey, I need this, 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 and they'd get it back to me. So we saw a huge gap at that point of time. And we just decided that graphic t-shirts is something we are passionate about, even though we are not designers on our own, but uh, we still really like good graphic design. And so we worked, we built the website on our own. We went live in March, 2012. And obviously at that point of time, it was all unlicensed fan art per se. And slowly we grew into uh, the space. And I think we got into licensing around uh, 2015, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. 2015, you started licensing. And, and yeah. now they, yeah, I, I like the, the way you really started in terms of the, the creating your own IP. You know, yeah. so all the graphics which you do is also in some form an IP and shifting to more licensed product. Yeah. Why this shift? Because you started seeing that people are becoming more conscious about a lot of the you know global IPs now which you manage and, and we talk about that how the sensibility of design would yeah, so act sure. So actually when we started off also we were doing something very similar to licensing where we were getting in touch with international designers directly over email and we were telling them hey we like your designs give us the rights to sell your designs in India and we will give you one dollar per sale. So we had actually a lot of agreements in place with a lot of international designers for their designs. And we were paying them $1 per sale. We were doing monthly payouts, three monthly payouts and all of that. This was before we got into the actual licensing space. Then around 2015 is when we got into discussions with Bradford and uh, Breaking Bad is our first license that we took up. Breaking Bad is a very famous TV show and that has a spin-off called Better Call Saul also. So that is the first license that we took up and we really saw value in it because we could advertise products more openly. We could also use uh, a lot of IP on our designs. Obviously, it has to uh, follow certain guidelines and all of that. But we saw all these advantages to licensing, and that's how we moved into the licensing space. But like I said, before that also, we were working with a lot of local artists, with a lot of local musicians. And without knowing it, we were actually licensing, but it wasn't a formal contract. It was all happening over email and it was all them sending us designs and us printing it and selling it. So, yeah. 
yeah absolutely and a lot of people don't know it's more ignorance to how licensing would work and and what the power of the brand is uh, is much more if you have a official license then i think you can really go and exploit it and yeah. and all the channels for distribution and so on yeah. so let's go into now this whole category itself because india is still very very small in this number and i can share with uh, our friends uh, that this is a global merchandising space uh, especially on companies which are doing a lot of t-shirts and and uh, uh, fashion accessories and things of like that and they create uh, these lines is a very very big it's a multi multi billion dollar uh, kind of a market india is still it's a very small uh, space it's still yeah. about a, a, a small industry about 2 300 crores and that's uh, also fragmented further into more structured players like red bull which runs an officially licensed merchandising and there are a couple of them now and one or two international companies also and the rest is uh, led by a lot of uh, people who are using these names and brand or copying uh, but they're not officially licensees out there right this yeah. just would happen but this still in industry is small but if you look at from a demographics of india and look at the you know the younger population in india look at the you know the casual wear in india look at all these things tell you a very different number right yeah. uh, and uh, and this means that there is somewhere we are not able to from from a demand view point i don't see that india can there can be any other backward market market outside china india where the population really is young and and people are aware now and uh, and from our size of the business still very small where do you think the, the gap is really why why are we not able to really reach out to a massive volumes and massive uh, app, uh, you know reach out uh, its distribution or what what is a uh, level of issue oh uh, right now i think it's the issue is from the supply side because the demand is definitely there uh, the moment you walk into any forum like a comic con say uh, you have a crazy number of footfall at our local comic cons which happen in mumbai bangalore delhi and all the big cities you have a crazy amount of footfall and the fans who are coming really go crazy over there and they actively want to buy licensed merchandise they really associate with the tv shows movies characters that you see on these uh, the designs that you see on the merchandise so there's definitely the demand is there uh the only thing is that the market is kind of diluted like you said by a lot of unlicensed players also so the indian customer is not really sure about uh how do i say this is not really sure about what he or she wants because the kind of options available out there are not too clear at the moment we at red wolf have tried to uh, clarify in such a way where if you search for say iron man t-shirts we are one of the f- top 5 searches on google right now you come to our website also we've tried to make it very clear that this is officially licensed merchandise uh the pages also clearly say that it's officially licensed in this and that so that we we are trying to educate the customers about licensed merchandise i definitely think the demand is there it's just us as companies have to be more out there we have to advertise more we have to spend more in order to acquire the customers we've realized this we've kept our budgets stagnant for a while and the uh sales have also been stagnant but the moment we've started ramping it up the sales have also picked up it's just about us being out there probably uh some kind of brand tie ups where marvel india or disney india actively promotes local brands that might help because one thing one very interesting thing that happened now is with the lockdown uh dc had the whole fan the fandom event and all that they had a huge thing online and immediately after that fans in the us could go to a website and buy merchandise from that event so the new batman logo and all that that was unveiled at the event fans could go to a website in the us and buy that kind of merchandise that kind of stuff needs to start happening in india because it's like the audience is there the potential is there it's just that we have to go out and put ourselves out there sure so very important point you have really raised is that there is a larger demand in there but is under serviced uh, because of the lack of distribution uh timing of the opportunity another thing which always worked you know bothered me in licensing is that the, like what you said that uh, they in us it's all real time yeah. right anything which comes in which is which is really at top of uh, awareness and top of demand uh, they would quickly put the licensing and they would really exploit the opportunity completely yeah all this needs a preparation time preparation time is normally about a year back they would say this is going to happen this is what we want to unveil and till that time the merchandise is available everywhere so the distribution is much wider yeah. india we have a very big lag in terms of uh, launching these lines you know we were yes. pretty, pretty much uh, off the you know uh, cycle you know so we we don't really come and the 
absolutely at, at the time of the cycle. So what are your opinion on that? How do you really cope up with this? Uh, how do you make a choice of which license program you need to do in the, say, next quarter? Sure. What is going to be, uh, the, how do you really bring in predictability? And that's something which a lot of people don't uh, able to understand and gauge. What is the customer going to buy and what is sure. exciting going to be in, say, December? Sure. So one thing we've realized over the course of time and after taking up a lot of licenses is, like you mentioned, timing is key. So we took up the Avengers license just around when Endgame was coming out. And when Endgame came out, Avengers, I mean, it became a household property name. Like Avengers now in India, like it's pretty much everyone knows about the Avengers. They've actually, they've probably overtaken your Batman and Superman just because of the kind of hype that the end game was able to create. We also noticed this with uh, brands like Game of Thrones. Uh, around the time when the season was going to start or during the season and just after the season, there was a great amount of buzz around Game of Thrones. We used to make designs for every episode. So we used to actually have a viewing uh, discussion in office where we were all watching the uh, episode simultaneously, taking notes about designs and this and that. Immediately after the episode got over, we would get into design work. We would start designing stuff, send it immediately over mail for approval, try to get approvals done quickly. And within a week, launch a design so that, because stuff that has happened during that episode is still fresh on people's mind. People are still searching for those key quotes or key moments on Google. And you want to be the person who's providing them with merchandise because they want it at that, in that uh, time frame. Something that, that's gonna happen next month is that the Mandalorian season two is coming out on Hotstar. So we are already working with the Disney team on this, where we've said that we want to do uh, social media promotions together. We have, we as Red Wolf have the most extensive Star Wars merchandise collection in India because I'm a huge Star Wars fan. So the moment we got the Disney license, I took it upon myself personally to push the Star Wars line. And right now in the online space, I think we have the most number of Star Wars designs out there. So we've told them Star Wars is something that we're very interested in and Mandalorian is something that we are actively pushing because it's coming out in October now. So we'll be doing a social media campaign with them. And that's how we're planning things around uh, key events, like you said. So, yeah, we're trying very, to stay ahead of the curve a bit, but yeah. Very interesting. And I think uh, at Bradford, we work with uh, companies like yours in terms of uh, when, they, when they do the planning of what they need to do. We yeah. always divide this into four blocks and one we call the classics. Uh, yeah. Classics never go out of fashion. Like, yeah. them, I think they, they're very strong and, and very, very strong. Always, it, we have, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a regular work. And then second is speciality. You need to create special lines because the target group becomes even more microly defined where people have a very different approach what lifestyle they want to carry. Yeah. So people follow a certain lifestyle and it's a reflection of their own personality. So you need to really create on a very clearly speciality structure. Third is seasonal, what you said. I mean, any, yeah. anything which is coming in, any, any sport coming in, any, any uh, you know, series coming in, or anything which is a new movie coming in, or anything which is, which is very seasonal, you clearly know this popular, there's a now new edition coming in, it'll refresh people. And fourth is impulse, you know, just, you just yeah. like it and something which you say, oh, I want to really take it. I always yeah. want it in my wardrobe. So how do you really break this? Uh, four. So in your case also, because you have now uh, very large and you have extended your category from t-shirts to a lot of other things. Have you also done the similar way your, your category mix and how do you really plan your, your portfolio? Because it can go crazy in terms of uh, doing it. And I will ask another quick question in this, because if you can sometimes go on a risk side, because yeah. you somehow produce something which uh, like, a, I mean, a conventional retail, there was a time where, you know, uh, future group actually over ordered white t-shirt shirts. Yeah. You know? okay. And they felt that India loves white and they only buy that and put it in big bazaar and it's not able to sell because uh, we've realized India only loves black. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> yeah black so. and navy blue are, uh, yeah. so fundamentally, so there is, there, you can go on a particular thing as is this happened with you where you have picked up a particular thing, which you thought and you produced a lot and, and you were not able to push the numbers there, or you predicted on a license, which you think would work and didn't work. Uh, sure. So coming back to the Game of Thrones example, we kind of thought it would be a evergreen uh, property just because of the kind of buzz the show created. But what we realized was the sales were high before the season, during the season, and just for a month or two after the season. And then there was a huge lull. So in terms of TV shows, it really depends. It could go either way. And what happened was after the last season, the fans have just washed their hands off the show. 
Game of Thrones is just the last season got such a bad reception that fans want nothing to do with that show. So after that merchandise is completely, we put everything on complete discount. Ki please just buy it at a low price, uh, just for some nostalgia value. But yeah, so uh, TV shows can go either way. Some TV shows are evergreen. Some TV shows kind of die off after a while. Something like Friends. Friends has uh, it's really, I would put it up there with any kind of uh, superhero because it's always got like a constant. People are always rewatching the show and they're always in touch with uh, Friends merchandise. So. Like you said, there are there are things that are very seasonal, but there are things that are evergreen also. And when we sign up with licenses, we try to make sure that we are covering the gamut of things. Like even when we signed a deal with uh, Disney India, we took on a lot of small things. Like say, Star Wars is not big in India. Star Wars is still a small part, but we made sure that the deal included Avengers and this and that, Defenders for that matter. And how we build our product lines around it is we focus seventy percent of our Design and production effort on your big licenses like your Avengers and this and that, but we also make sure that the other licenses are represented well. Because something that we were shocked with is uh, Peanuts, Snoopy. Uh, it's not really that well known over here, even though like in the newspaper, it you always have a Charlie uh, Charlie Brown uh, comic, but it's not that well known. Snoopy is not that well known in India, but for us, Peanuts has done very well as a brand. I don't know if it's because people find that the dog looks cute, and it's just a cute and general uh, nice-looking design. But it's just Snoopy with a matching editorial to go with it has done very well for us. So that came as a surprise. Very interesting, and I think there's a very careful planning and and uh, business analytic. I would say uh, that you need to keep the intelligence going on what is moving, why it's moving. That's why I yeah. really want to see any merchandise company should really put into small pockets and yeah. they should not average it out. They need to really see how uh, age groups are working. You know what you're saying in certain age groups, how genders are working, how yeah. they are. so all these are very important aspects of learning, and that becomes a principle and very dynamic business in in that sense. Now let's let's talk about the design side of it because sure. licensing, uh, and I've realized that, that this is one of the areas also even the big licensing companies, especially when it comes to India, are not able to really do the justice of storytelling. Okay. you know so they very clearly give you a you know a, a brand manual and tell you and give you freedom and whatever you want to do just get it approved from us they, they don't really have a whole storytelling and that's sure. all uh, most of the time people pick up the licenses because they are aspirational they are their yeah. brand is like i got associated as you said some are strong fans and the fan community obviously is very limited to the time with they are excited about things and when they are not excited they don't buy because yeah. the story is not been unlocked yeah. how do you really unlock the story and that's what uh bradford at licensing we believe that there is a, there is a two things which are very strong is unlock the the whole story and that creates a lot of emotional connect how yeah. unless and until you are able to do these two things you will not have a very long term program you will always be just riding on the wave yeah. and how do you really at your level at uh, uh, red wolf uh, what what do, how do you really unlock that story how do you really sure. put the story out there sure so uh, like i said uh, the advantage we have at red wolf is that we are all fans of the licenses that we take up so for us it's not uh, something that we haven't heard about or don't know the entire story like we are all we are hardcore tv show movies we watch all of them we are completely into pop culture it's what we follow on social media it's what we consume on all the platforms like netflix etc so we are we are hardcore fans so any time we take up a license we already know about the characters we already know about the story the kind of uh portrayal that we should use in our designs and all of that and when we get style guides from the company we extensively go through all the style guides and we shortlist things that we think will work well on apparel and accessories and then we start matching them with editorials because what we've noticed is that graphic design is great but sometimes you need to attach a very good editorial to it a line on the t-shirt because at the end of the day a t-shirt is something uh, like a wearable canvas where you're portraying uh, your personality out into the world and sometimes great design works but sometimes design also needs a smart editorial or a one liner to go with it and the thing is since we understand the character so well we know like what will work well with the iron man what will work well with a black panther it's not generic for us a lot of companies take up uh, so what happens is they take up a license they get the style guide 
they pick a graphic from here, they pick a editorial from here, put it together, and hope that it will make a good design. In our case, we really understand the characters, we really understand the editorials, we make sure that we are matching them properly. We make sure that the designs are something that we would wear as a, as a young working professional. And we also try to make sure it's something that has a bit of a global kind of uh, look and feel to it. So we've always, like I said, since before we started this company, we've always bought most of our merchandise from the US and uh, other countries. So we've always tried to match those design sensibilities because we think they also add some kind of aspirational value to merchandise. Sure. So now I'll take one more question and then probably invite Vatsal to pick up a few of his uh, questions from you. Sure. Another area which I, I went through your website in the morning and, and because we were speaking and I've gone through your rates and the offers you're running. Yeah. In yeah. To me, I mean, I might be a little biased, but I was saying that you're selling so cheap. Uh, <laughs> You know, so while I understand the affordability, but if I look at anything which is in Vapen West yeah. on official merchandise base, yeah. uh, if you really see, it's a product is commodity. In this t-shirt is the same t-shirt which comes from India, Bangladesh, wherever you buy, buy from. Yeah. It, it's the same product which has the same kind of cost. But if you see the difference between com uh, companies which are in West selling the kind of price point they yeah, sell. Yeah, it's $21 over there. <laughs> yeah, and what we are selling, how do you really make a financial sense. I mean, why would you not push the price up, and why would a fan not be ready to pay you maybe another four, five, six dollar extra sure. on what you are currently giving? Because, and on one side, I, I see you, you. It's it's very hard because you're getting official global licenses which actually charge you money, and and the other side you have to sell this. This economics to me, in somewhere is it's not really, and there is a cost of acquisition also because you have to be on Google, you need to be up and and marketing. So, is the market not ready to pay you that top dollar or we just, we always did that or, or competition doesn't allow you because when you are official merchandise, I will not get that anywhere else. I would only get it from you. Yeah. Would, it, would you not push yourself and putting the price up there? So as you correctly pointed out, it's a lot about competition. And uh, right now there are a lot of online players who have official licenses and they've sort of kept the price down and in fact lowered it much more than it used to be. So uh, what we've done is Designs that we are very confident about, designs that are very intricate and have been printed with using complex printing technology, we've tried to price it a little higher than what the general price point is. Because right now in the market, 499 is your acceptable yeah. price point for a t-shirt. But a lot of companies have gone and dragged this even lower to a 299, 399. And we are competing with them because they are also official licensees. So what we do is if we've got designs that are really good that we've made in house by tweaking the style guide a little, gotten it approved, we've tried to price it at a 599 or higher. What we've done is if we made statement pieces like recently, uh, Rick and Morty, a famous animation, uh, it has, uh, what we've done is we made a jacket for the character Rick, where if you put the hood up, it's his hair and it's got his suit and all of that. It's a very, uh, it's not a basic hoodie. It's a bit complex. So what we did is we've priced at a much higher price. We are selling that as at 1200 rupees. A normal hoodie in the Indian market would be around 800, 900 rupees. So we've always experimented with pricing when we felt that the product will justify it. But unfortunately, the scenario in the Indian market is such that a normal graphic t-shirt has to be priced at 499 or else it won't, it won't do that well. So, yeah. Yeah, sure. But I, I also feel that it, at, and, and Bradford also, we, we should encourage our potential licensors that they should, if, if they really want to run a program, they need to not give non-exclusive licenses to a lot of people. Yeah. They, they, they do it from a perspective because they have get better value from everybody. Yes. But eventually they, they get a lesser dollar because end of the day, their, their dollar is based on, on the performance of the price. The returns, yeah. yeah. So if you, if you just discount too much in the market, yeah. one, you, really, uh, you know, don't get the right kind of uh, value and then hence royalties and everything would not come in the right sense. So I think in my advice would be that you should also push some of the licenses, especially when you are also attempting on something, you know, yeah. I, I can understand the Disney's and the likes of them. They, they like they're doing that in all markets. They don't want yeah. to give it pretty exclusive, but when it comes to some unique, uh, licenses, uh, exclusive programs will do very well. And then you can really push the price up because I personally feel the market is ready, you know, on the other side, you know, when people are buying products from these branded uh, uh, companies like a Nike or a Under Armour and things yeah. like that, your price points are, you know, 1200, 1400, 1500, 
2000 plus 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 yeah. uh, i think there is a there is a 2 200 300 kind of a window which is out there to improve the whole structure this i this sure. price i've been seeing for last uh, i think 6 years people yeah, are yeah, it's been I, I think the country is moved the indian you know uh, uh, the inflation is moved everything has happened but this price is pretty much not changed it's like yeah. a Somehow stuck in the in the. <laughs> I, I feel one of the areas, which uh, two two areas I think to me have always bothered me. One, I think the timing of our licenses, which were which were not in the sync of the yeah. the global like structure. And second was always the price. The price. If you, okay. if you don't address these two issues, then I think the the growth of this industry will not happen. Third, you rightly said, uh, more more awareness, more marketing has to be done to create yeah. that bigger reach, because the demand is already there. Yeah. So what's all your question uh, on this? Thank you very much uh, for joining us today. That is really wonderful. I believe, uh, uh, I certainly believe that Red Bull has come a long way in terms of setting up this entire licensing merchandise in the Indian market, okay, which is still at a very, uh, which is still growing at a very you know, fast pace. Yeah. Uh, you started off with, uh, uh, at that point of time when uh, we were seeing the growth of e-commerce platforms, which is like Mintras and all of that. Yeah. And Mintra, I still remember when they started off, they were into completely customized mugs and all of that, I believe. Okay. And over a period of time, they got into complete range of fashion apparel and everything. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to the e-commerce platforms, where we already have, you know, Mintras and Amazons and all of that, okay, where you have already created a niche in terms of the, uh, you know, licensed merchandise, having a partners right from, you know, Avengers to Marvels to uh, Game of Thrones to all of that. Uh, coming to the price points, I would like to understand, uh, uh, Vivek, uh, how has been the average discounting have you been able to manage uh, how because there are certain parameters which comes in in place when it comes to the e-commerce platforms in terms of running their entire operations and uh, you know uh, managing the entire stock inventory and everything. Yeah. So right from the uh, 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 run rate, inventory run rate to sell through ratios to uh, replenishments to everything. So how you know Red Bull have this able to manage you know because you've got 20 plus licenses across the portfolio. So every licensee or let's say every merchandise has got their complete range of uh, you know. Uh, <clears throat> segments under that. Okay, so how you have been able to manage, uh, you know, right from the uh, uh, discountings to you know uh, inventories to sales through ratios to sure. uh, rent rate to everything actually. Sure. So uh, let me break this up. So we have some licenses that we can sell on our website and on marketplaces like Amazon, Mintra, etc. And we have some licenses that we are allowed to sell only on our website. So. For your question, I'm going to focus on the licenses that we are allowed to sell on our website and your marketplaces like Amazon, Mintra and all of that. In terms of inventory, uh, we have split our inventory onto our website and onto this software called Unicommerce. So what Unicommerce does is it syncs inventory to Mintra, Amazon, Flipkart and distributes your inventory everywhere. So inventory is completely sorted by Unicommerce. But of course, we've taken 30% of our inventory and put it on Unicommerce and 70% is on our website. Then moving towards sales and discounting, like you said, these websites demand that your products are always on sale or on discount or whatever it is. But see, all our products are already, our MRP is 999. And what we do is we discount it down to a 599 or a 499. So that works well in terms of discounts because these websites are happy where they're getting X percent discount at all time. And we can also maintain the same selling price on these websites and our website even though we are making a smaller profit margin on these marketplaces. So in terms of discounts, we have a set number of products that we are willing to sell at a discounted price as well. And we move that on to the marketplaces. On our website, we try to start everything off at full price and then discount it only if it's not selling well. So, yeah. So there's one question from Shipra I would like to take, uh, which is the top performing uh, license you have? Which is the top performing license, and and give me also which license you will you will put your best bet on. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, I I probably covered this uh, a little earlier. It was it's definitely the Avengers lineup because during oh, we'll... end game it really took us to another level and it gave us confidence to discuss stuff like Batman, Superman, Harry Potter, and all of that. So Avengers is definitely our top uh, performing. And but again, Avengers is a group of characters together, but they are our top performing uh, license at the moment. So yeah. One thing I would like to understand here, Vivek, is that when we work out any uh, licensing uh, proposition with any brand or any property, so 
uh, apart from the popularity or apart from the you know uniqueness of the uh, uh, property what other things or what factors uh, you guys keep in mind you know in terms of what kind of characters does the property have what kind of uh, pro uh, portfolios uh, does the property have because if i talk about marvels or avengers so they have got close to about you know 10 Uh, uh characters and properties that they have got under that name okay yeah. or let's say friends might be having a you know that classic uh, uh you know attachment with the you know it's uh, with the name okay yeah. so what are the factors that you come up with a bit the colors in terms of the uh, the positioning in terms of the fan base so what what do you actually come up and you decide okay fine this is the property that we should go ahead with and this is the property we should not go ahead with yeah and also just to add on that what watsal has said this is one of the areas which also another problematic which means that uh, all the properties you've told uh, and you see the content available on indian television and see on i think 95% is indian content yeah and 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 what we are selling is almost uh, what is the 5% left out right internationally yeah, yeah. we are not selling so why you would not select any indian content uh, available uh okay. what's is selecting always the entire thing is it a, is a it's 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 what why this behavior is not there especially when people are watching even the in the younger uh, uh, young adults and other people also watching a lot of indian content today yeah. Yeah. and and nobody is wearing it so what what is lacking in that uh sure so the way we approach licenses is since we are purely online what we do is we see uh how much people are searching on google for this property so even before approaching say a marvel or a disney before going in for our meeting we already knew the search volumes per month for iron man t-shirts for uh, captain america t-shirts so those search volumes for us are very important because like i said a bulk of our customer base is googling stuff and then coming to our site so we need to make sure that we are picking licenses that people are act actively looking for because that gets them to our site once they are on our site we can have secondary things like say not to make people are searching for star wars shirts but if they reach our site after searching for something like iron man they happen to be star wars fan they check out our collection they might like what they see and make a purchase they might see something snoopy related they might have a dog at home and then just feel this is a cute t-shirt to buy and make the purchase so our primary objective is to get people to land on our site and the only way people will land on our site is if they are actively searching for a keyword that is available on our site So in terms of Indian content there's great content available but uh, I don't know if someone like Amazon Prime Netflix is giving out the licenses to these kind of like something like a Mirzapur uh I don't know if the licenses are available games, at the moment that but it will be the next step I'm guessing to get into that space classic bollywood movies also like say something like andaz apna apna is evergreen so we definitely want to look at stuff like that and yeah it's on the table yes yeah i still feel that is a long way for indian content to really be ready uh, because uh, they're not designed to really have the the merchandising that i think which to really yeah. look at the global content being created actually is a by product I and mean, content is actually not the main focus actually mm. what happens out of the content is the big focus yeah uh, so here we are only busy in selling the content you know and uh, they nobody really because they nobody is really main money you know so andaz apna apna would have saw that 50% of revenues they would have gone non non uh, you know distribution of their content sure. yeah. uh, then they would also focus in creating that kind of ip so there is a yeah. very little unlock value uh, which is there that's one and second i think overall aspiration uh, we 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 been bought up in in the manner that we well we all talk about atmanirbhar voice for local and all that is going on but when first i see around people wearing what they wearing is very americana they yeah. still want a uh captain america to be wearing sure. on but it's made in india at least now so that's that's step <laughs> one so yeah. uh, at least that's that's the only uh relief we have but from an aspiration view point still we have far way to go uh yeah. before we can really start uh, addressing that too but this is an opportunity i think this is an opportunity to really showcase one or two serious examples and and work with some of the content providers and and really uh, bring that kind of value and once it starts happening i think it will also shift a lot of people and yeah. that really starts giving the feel good in people purchase decision say look i'm proud wearing what i'm wearing and i i'm i'm uh, i feel that that kind of a aspiration doesn't come in that it not start flat sure 
Any other question, Atsal? Yeah. So uh, over a period of time, we we also would like to understand what has been the consumer acceptance towards licensed merchandise. Basically, uh, it is just at a very uh, growing stage, or I would say a very developing stage. Uh, you know, selling of the licensed merchandise, and uh, people are still yet, you know, uh, just if it. Uh, Leave that uh, segment of uh, younger generation. You know, maybe we counting from you know 15 to uh, maybe uh, 30. I would say that age group. Okay. So how that that shift has happened over a period of years, and uh, how people have said uh, started actually accepting the licensed merchandise from all these various uh, you know portfolios to characters to uh, superheroes. This is one thing, uh, Vivek. One more thing I would like to understand is that uh, let's say you have been working with all this uh, you know uh, great superheroes coming under the Marvels uh, section. Let's say Brad Pitt has come up with uh, Shakti Man okay. sure. again. Shakti Man, which has been India's first superhero, as uh, we all know, we have we have grown uh, seeing up uh, Shakti Man. They're coming up with their complete 3D animated uh, series and all of that. So, what will be your thoughts? Let's say you know, uh, working out the license merchandise for Shakti Man. You know, uh, maybe in terms of uh, how look and feel can be, how can be you know the graphics can be designed and all of that. So, those are two things which uh, we would like to understand. Okay, sure. So uh, one thing about customers accepting uh, licensed merchandise is, when you take the license for any property, you have you get access to a lot of style guides that include a lot of reference images, a lot of character poses, a lot of logos. So what you can do is you can create better looking content. So using those style guides, you can use you can create better looking social media content. That is something that keeps your uh, users engaged all the time. If I didn't have access to logos, if I didn't have access to character images. my social media content would be very generic where i have to use a plain background and this and that for my images but now i can just use movie wallpapers and all of that and just make good looking images and then push my product onto customers and they will also be more accepting even the website i have a carousel on top which shows all the logos that i have official licenses for and it keeps scrolling and customers are used to seeing these logos they used to seeing these logos on tv they used to seeing these logos on the movie screen So there's automatic connect. If he sees a Batman logo, immediately he's like, "Okay, I'm a Batman fan." If someone sees a Wonder Woman logo, she's like, "Okay, Wonder Woman, I like this. Let me click on it and see what merchandise is there." So that kind of connection is automatically there. You can also do a lot of uh, social media activity around it, where you're combining stuff like we're trying to do for the Mandalorian now in October, where we, along with Disney India, we'll be doing a lot of uh, cross promotions. so then users are engaged users start trusting the brand ki okay now disney india is posting about this brand maybe i can check it out so that kind of adds another layer of uh, general trust and security for users and coming to your second point about shakti man uh, again for us how it works is are people actively interested in shakti man merchandise a lot of people are will follow shakti man say once the animation comes out and all of that but are they actively going on to google and searching for that merchandise is something that we look into if there is any kind of interest then we'll obviously see what kind of merchandise is possible and get into discussions and all of that so that's how it works for us so yeah you need to set up some opinion makers yeah. and uh, once you start up a opinion maker the cycle is very different you know and then globally this is how it works and we have a break in between in indian content when it up when the global content is created they create some opinion makers and these opinion makers suddenly would wear something and absolutely influencers yeah they influencers yeah. and as this happens people start searching more on that and yeah. companies like your would get the right kind of uh, pull and yes. then we'll start doing it this is how the cycle works yeah. now problem in india sometimes happens you know companies create their ips uh, but they don't really go out and create these influencers and and really create that kind of a vibe where people start asking for it look i want to be part of it Yeah. and that's where it all goes wrong you know and and uh, so this is where i think the opportunity like we, we used to represent a brand called jeep a long time back uh, and uh, one of the movies a very old movie salman actually wore in his movie this mm-hmm. brand called jeep i don't know where he picked up because that was not available in that time and suddenly okay. we started getting calls from people who saying yeah. pick up license and companies started coming us uh, for us to for a jeep license yeah. right so this, this is clearly uh you know comes from an influencer so if shakti man has to do a really good work is is to really get some people uh start wearing in yeah definitely on social media create some kind of buzz around it and yeah take it from there yeah 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 so what so, are the trends that you are seeing uh, just to understand because since you have been coming completely from the licensing background you have already worked with so many properties and i think uh how do you see vivek you know the coming trends would be of the developments would be of the opportunities i would say 
uh, for the uh, in, 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 in the domestic market, you know, where uh, right from the retailers to manufacturers and exporters uh, are actually coming into licensing, and you know, uh, from the brand's perspective, they are also getting extended into various other segments or categories, and you know, product uh, merchandise. And, and from the retailers' uh, point of view, let's say from your the way you have revolutionized the entire, uh, you know, <clears throat> licensed merchandise, you know, coming up with so many uh, options uh, and you know, delivering it to the customer. So, what what opportunities that you see, what trends that you see is going to be in the domestic market today? Uh, sure. So I think that a lot of local brands, uh, especially a lot of local sports brands, are now coming into uh, the limelight. IPL obviously is your super famous. uh local sports brand i would say people are looking to buy ipl team merchandise now uh, i think the next step would be something like a kabaddi and a football also getting that kind of limelight where if i'm say i watch football i'm a huge manchester united fan i buy a lot of manchester united merchandise but i should also start following the mumbai team for example there should be matches happening i, I should be buying their jersey merchandise and all of that so i really think indian sports is something that is right now going to pick is at an inflection point and merchandise will definitely pick go hand in hand with that uh then also like i said at the start online showcases are going to become a huge thing in india where people are going to go uh like the whole dc fandom event happened they should have more uh stuff like that for indian audiences and also tie that in with a immediate merchandise launch so that like uh, mr gorav rightly pointed out people see something on on the spot can go and buy merchandise for that uh, brand so that timing really has to go hand in hand and i think local brands are definitely picking up now so yeah those are the two key things i also do. agree and also a lot of things you can also do as a company and create you know your own uh, events and so to say uh, clear that popularity and work with these licensees who want to really come yeah. in how they can become the next trends coming in the next two quarters and things like that like in conventional fashion they would do a fashion week much before uh, telling about what kind of trends which needs to be coming in similarly in your case you can also do a lot of things uh, because at the end of the day it's an aspiration is a fashion yeah. so we really come down and people need to see how, what kind of uh, trends uh, are going to come in and things uh, companies both indian and in overseas would start adapting to your line they would understand and work with you so i think in particularly your company is at a good stage where your foundation is business intelligence you working on intelligence on understanding what are people going to be uh, buy what kind of trends would come in what kind of uh, things would work what kind of design patterns would work so all that learning i think could go backward now to these uh, licensors so that they are much more aware uh, yeah. about what they need to do and much collective partnership much robust partnerships and also doing some kind of a offline uh, kind of activation while you're sure. you're uh, online i think a lot of offline activity also uh, uh, would be in that any okay. last words we want to do because we have a we come down to our uh, you know time limit so any last words with uh, vivek would come from you what is the vision for you and how do you really want to take this business and 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 continue to that you are already 9 uh, years in this business uh, yeah. and uh, what is the next 10 years look like to you so for us uh, licensing has worked quite well and we are quite happy and we know that it's uh, licensing that has taken us to step 2 so like you said now to move to step 3 and beyond is how well we use those licenses because now that we have these licenses in the basket it's our responsibility not just to put products out there but to build stories to build uh, partnerships with the licensors where we can uh, cross promote things and generally just gather the trust of the audience so we definitely have to take it upon ourselves to use these licenses that are with us in a better fashion in terms of marketing in terms of influencer tie up in in terms of creating this whole 360 degree story that customers can really buy into and yes definitely local brands is something that we need to start putting our trust in and try to start building that on the side as well so yeah absolutely it was great to have you avatsal any words from your side anything you want to say I believe uh, that's that's there, sir. Uh, that was really wonderful. Uh, the way uh, Red Bull has come a long way in terms of uh, setting up that licensing examples. You know how uh, you know adapting uh, so many merchandise and properties, and you know collaborating that you know uh, creating that entire merchandise and you know launching in the market. So I think that is wonderful, Vivek, uh, that you guys have done. Okay. Thank you. And Thanks. we really look forward to have a, a lot many more associations with you, not only breaking that, uh, but uh, uh, we have got many properties that we will be looking forward sure. to have that association with Red Bull. Yeah.
Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us on Unlock and yeah. with uh, Bradford. And uh, good to have you. And uh, you have done a great work. And keep doing promising work and build your business to much bigger heights. And, and take it to other markets also. You know, just don't wait here. The market is wide open. You know, if sure. you, yeah. you can really go to the multiple markets. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Thank, thank you, Vivek. Thank you. Thank you.